This has sort of been published a bit, and it's had mixed, re mixed reviews. Uh, some people laugh, some people email me and say they'll fund it. So it's depending on where I am. Um, if you look at London, you look at all the cars out there. Um, they are big, they are noisy, they are an addendum to the oil industry. They all come out of the oil industry. And in a way, maybe in the future, we will be lucky to own a car and run a car. Maybe there are systems in place which don't allow us to have a car, and if there's no public services in place, let's think about the car in a different way. So I started to think about liberating the streets for people so we can walk around and not be terrified of crossing the road. I mean, these, some of these SUVs are big as, big as elephants. I mean, they're incredible. Our son goes to school in Hampstead. We counted 74 one day just from the junction at, at um, uh, Swiss Cottage to Frognall. It's obscene, with one woman in it, mainly, because I don't know what they're terrified of, you know, whatever. Anyway, so, you know, if you're, if you're moving slowly through society, you don't need to be that protected. I mean, I can accept maybe that on the motorway, but there are systems in place which have been in place for a long time now, sensor technology, proximity sensor technology, satellite technology, which can keep you away from anything you want to be kept away from. So maybe in the future, just maybe, we go away from what we see there to this kind of hyper-democracy where we create bubbles which are not traditionally what we know as, as a car. The problem with a car is it has a, has a direction, and directions mean you flow in one direction. I was thinking maybe how you could flow in multiple directions, like a liquid. So cars are like liquids, so you maximize, optimize space with, with these bubbles. And by the way, it's made from virtually nothing. I mean, it's very few parts. So this is the idea for the vehicle. It has doors that rotate like this. It's very easy to get in it. It's actually quite easy to build. It has a photo photovoltaic cap, which is something I've been researching for years. It has four seats, and it has depressions for shopping and so on, or whatever. And it has, at this point now, we're looking at a compressed air uh, unit. So what you do is you drive around in this. You, you tell it where to go. Uh, and then when it stops, you park on top of this chap you get out, of course, and then it elevates up. So it liberates all the space for people. But at night, you reuse the energy you have from here, and it's a street light, right? That's why the language is that way. If you put a car on a stick, it would look ridiculous, but it's, just, it, it's the influence of the street light which brings it back into some new realm. Now, if you look at it in reality, if you go here, for example, this is a Photoshop job, is this is uh, Sendai MediaTek in, in Sendai, designed by Toyo Ito, which I did the top floor of, by the way. This is what it looks like in a modern context. You put it in a modern context, there's nothing wrong. It's absolutely fine. We need to promote in London the idea of modern context. Modern or contemporary next to old means contemporary looks really contemporary and old looks really old. There's no ambiguity. There's no problem with that. The gherkin is, is that and we need to promote more of that in London architecturally. Here outside the Gherkin, um, you know, I'd be more happy to see these things floating around. I don't need to own a car. I do have a car, by the way. I have an Audi A2, uh, which is one of the first ones, and it does, about, uh, oh, it does about 60 to the gallon. We fill it up once a month, um, but I only use it to, at minimum just to do a bit of shopping or, or you know, I just don't need a car. And I think a lot of people don't need a car. You know, these could be taxis, I don't know. Taxis are unregulated, by the way. That's why they belch out all of those fumes. They need to be regulated. So there's, there's stuff that's wrong in society. If you take the air pollution and the noise pollution out of a city like London or Milan, overnight, those cities become really beautiful. I get hay fever. The air pollution that's created by the sunlight, which produces metal halides in, in the air at this time of the year, it means people like me can't go out. I am demolished by hay fever. I have headaches, I have bad chest, I have sore throats, I have all of that stuff. And it's partly because of the pollution acting with the pollen, uh, tree pollen in my case, which, which creates this condition. 
So you know you can't you you you've got to work and you've got to go out, but you can't. It, it's, it's a there's a misery in society because we're just not working at our full potential. We have all these technologies to sort this out, but we're just driving trucks like that and shipping everything around. It's absolutely ridiculous.